Hey, how's it going, my fellow survivors? Hope this quarantining isn't driving you too stir-crazy, but if you're an introvert like me, you're most likely cool with it, because this is the same shit I've been doing most of my life. Only difference is we actually serve a purpose now, because we're contributing to the safety of society. And it feels pretty good. Makes us feel important. But yeah, in this video, I want to talk about the tragedy of The Last of Us Part II's release. Now, firstly... I want to take it back to 2013 to the first game's release. It released the critical praise, got tens across the board, and was a lot of people's game of the year, and was considered one of the greatest games of all time because of its story and character development, which I agree with. Neil Druckmann seen the sales, seen the reviews, and seen the hype surrounding the game. So he knew he had to make a part two. So he started working on the story that same year. We know this because in, in an interview, in either 2016 or 2017, he said him and Ashley Johnson ate at a restaurant and spoke about the Left Behind DLC, and in that same conversation, he told her about the story of Part 2. So if you think about it, Part 2 has basically been in development for seven years, if you take into account the ideas, the writing, the pre-production, and full production. Seven years, which is crazy. We didn't find out about its existence though until PSX 2016 when they showed off the reveal trailer with Ellie playing guitar and singing while Joel walks up and says, You really gonna go through with this? That night, the hype train was initiated. The next year, in 2017, we got a new trailer, only this time it had no recognizable characters. They were all new, including the mystery woman that sparked a massive debate online about who she really was. And that night, the hype train intensified. Less than a year later, we were blessed with a full 10 minutes of actual gameplay at E3, showing off the graphics, the visual fidelity, the environmental detail, the combat, the dodge, the prone, and all sorts of other goodies. That night, the hype train intensified immensely. And sadly, we went over a year and a half without any new info or gameplay up until Outbreak Week 2019 when we got a full part two blowout. A bunch of lucky ass game journalists got to play three hours of the game and we got to see like 15 minutes of new gameplay and inside the demo video with info from the devs, hands on impression videos, got a new trailer that finally officially revealed Joel along with the release date of February 21st. That same week pre-orders opened up and millions of fans pre-ordered with the hopes of playing the game in February. A month later, we got the bad news that the game had to be delayed another three months to May 29th. Fans were pretty pissed and disappointed, but after a few days, they all calmed down and realized it was only a couple of months and it would end up being worth the wait. After that delay announcement, Naughty Dog pretty much went radio silent though, and we didn't get any new info or gameplay for months, even though in the Inside the Demo video, Neil said, closer to launch they'd be showing more but we didn't hear nothing else until april 2nd of this year and we had to read the news nobody wanted to read part two got delayed indefinitely with no new release date they also released some new screenshots but that only made things worse because we had to look at some amazing screenshots from a game we might not get to play until 2021 and a lot of people are worried they might die before they get to play the game, and that's a valid concern nowadays with all the bad shit that's going on in the world. And I know, video games aren't that important in the grand scheme of things because this shit's serious and people are dying all over the place, but video games are important when you're stuck at home 24-7 with nothing else to do, and people get tired of playing the same games over and over again, Unless you're a lucky ass streamer or YouTuber who gets paid big money to play the same game for a hundred years. <laughs> I mean, it's bad enough Cyberpunk and Watch Dogs Legions got delayed before the pandemic. But we all thought we had The Last of Us Part 2 to look forward to, so it was cool. Now most of us have no new games to look forward to other than The Ghost of Tsushima, but at this rate we might as well prepare ourselves for that to get delayed also. I mean... 2020 is pretty much canceled, guys, at this point. And there's nothing worth being excited about because you're just going to end up disappointment. 
and I hate to sound selfish, but I really wish Sony would just make the decision to release Part 2 digitally May 29th and physically months down the road when things are back up and running. It's selfish because I know a majority of you are physical gamers who enjoy having the case and the disc and don't need internet to install it and can sell the game once you've played it enough. I get that. I also understand that a lot of you don't have very fast internet and are worried it's going to take days to download the game. But you gotta think, would you rather play the game digitally in May or wait till later this year or most likely 2021 to get your disc? If you say wait, you're crazy. A true Last of Us fan would say fuck it and buy digital so they can play as soon as possible, not wait potentially another year just so you can have a disc in your hand. I mean, you really want to risk dying in the next year to COVID without beating part two first? Come on now. I sure as hell don't. And I'm going to be real with you. My internet is slow as shit compared to others. It's around 50 megabytes if I'm lucky. Majority of the time it goes between, it like fluctuates between like 30 megabytes and 50 megabytes. And games do take a while to download, but I'm cool with that. Hell, even if I had dial up speeds, I'd still be down for a digital release. Yeah, it might take a full week to preload it, but hey, at least I'd be playing it sooner than later, which is all I care about. I mean, the people who complain about internet being the reason they don't like digital blow my mind. I mean, just about every game we play usually needs an internet connection sometime. Whether it's because of DRM, or for DLC, patches, updates, day one updates, or multiplayer. So I don't see the problem. I've been digital for years because I mainly play on PC and get all my games through Steam. I've never gone out to buy physical copies of PC games. I mean, most people don't. And I read that 83% of PC game sales are digital, meaning only 17% are physical. So if Naughty Dog was a PC exclusive studio, this game would have never gotten delayed in the first place. And sometimes I wish they were, because PC is sorely lacking first party studios on the same level as Naughty Dog, and it sucks ass. But yeah, as bad as I want a digital release, you physical gamers are safe. You don't have to worry about us getting it first because when it comes to digital and physical game sales on consoles, the percentage is pretty much 50-50. So Sony would miss out on half their player base's money. And I read an article that said that digital sales are slightly surpassing physical sales on PS4. Digital sales being 53% and physical being 47%. But that's still a big chunk of potential profits Sony is going to miss out on. And they're just not going to take that chance. Plus, if you think about it, if it releases on May 29th digitally and physically months later, the hype for the game would die down drastically. A lot of physical gamers that don't decide to buy digital would probably just watch a playthrough online instead of buying the game and wait for a half-off sale or something next year, mainly because it doesn't have multiplayer. If it had multiplayer, it would add more value and fans would probably still be willing to pay full price for the physical copy months after the digital release, but apparently the multiplayer is going to be a standalone game, so they'd most likely just wait for that. But yeah, I really don't know what Sony is going to do about Part 2. Digital is what a lot of fans want, but there's also a lot of fans who would rather wait for physical, even if that means it takes another year. I mean, these physical gamers have way too much patience, <laughs> but not me. I get impatient as hell waiting on a hot pocket to get done in the microwave. So waiting another year on a game I've already been waiting four years for, the fuck out of here. And I guarantee you these patient physical gamers do not have the patience to keep their asses in the house for a month to help in this damn lockdown and self quarantine bullshit. But they got the patience to wait another year for a physical copy of a game. Y'all crazy. I mean, if I was still into physical copies, I'd turn digital real quick. I ain't trying to turn another year older before I play this shit. And I just wish there was a way for them to release that Suburbs demo the game journalist got to play last year. That could at least keep us busy while we wait longer for the full release, but I know Druckmann said that Making a demo would require too much work, and with everyone working from home, exterminating the final bugs in the full game, it, it really wouldn't be worth it. 
So, we're just stuck re-watching the same old gameplay and looking at the same old screenshots till Naughty Dog drops some new content on us, which is hopefully going to happen this month. I'd be happy with a nice 10 minute long Joel gameplay demo. That could be the last gameplay they release until the game comes out and I'd be cool with it. But anyways, those are my thoughts on the whole delay slash digital release debacle. What are your thoughts on it? Let me know below and remember guys, you're not alone in this delayed depression. We all are. We're going to get through this and hopefully Sony and Naughty Dog surprise us with some good news by the end of the month. Stay safe. Stay badass, and most of all, stay your ass in the house. Click her out.